So I want to start off with the first one. This is the one I actually like to call the the zombie stock, if you will. And that company is called Geron Corporation. That ticker symbol is G E R N. Uh, Todd. This company has been around for almost 30 years, believe it or not, and it's really been hoping to kind of drag its lifeless zombie body across the finish line, getting from you know small biotech to commercially profitable biotech, and it has really been limping its way to that. Um, I was looking today just at the stock. Uh, it had its heyday really back in the early 2000s, when at one point the stock was actually trading over $60 a share. Today, that share price is $1.53, believe it or not. Todd, I'm starting to think that maybe this might be the end of the road for Drawn. What do you think? It does not look good. It does not look good. I mean, this is a super scary stock. It's it's got to be you know one of the most frustrating stocks for for investors who had a lot of high hopes that a metal stat, their drug for myelofibrosis, myeloblastic syndromes, uh, would pan out. Unfortunately, they were developing that drug with Johnson and Johnson. Johnson and Johnson had an opt out clause in in their license agreement uh, that would allow them to give their rights back to Geron if they didn't like what they saw. In the phase two data, and sure enough, um, that's what happened. J and J crunched the numbers, looked at it, looked at the developing uh, landscape, competitive landscape, and the indications, and decided, "Yep, we're not willing to hand over all of these hundreds of millions of dollars and milestones, pay for all of these development costs uh, to be able to 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 get this metal stat across the finish line." And now that leaves Geron in a really tight spot. Because they need to figure out, okay, we just lost our licensing partner. We don't have a ton of cash on the books. And now we're going to have to conduct these expensive phase three trials on our own. How the heck are we going to do that? And I think that that's one of the, that's obviously the big reason why this has been one of the worst stock performers this year. And um, sadly, Shannon, I don't, I don't think there's a lot of hope left for, uh, for a reawakening. Of this of this stock at least until 2020, when maybe maybe if they can find the cash somewhere to keep going, uh, they might have some additional data they can share with us that, that gets investors excited. Yeah, and what's so disappointing about the stock is there was a tremendous optimism heading into uh, many of these trials. For in uh, myelofibrosis that you mentioned, uh, the early data really seemed to suggest that the drug could actually reverse the effects of myelofibrosis, which is basically a type of cancer that turns the bone marrow into scar tissue. And so there was a lot of optimism with that, and it certainly would have given um, Geron's a metal stat drug a leg up uh, commercially when you compare it to Insights to Coffee, because Jacoffee does not do that, um, and JAK inhibitors don't do that. So, this could have been really a really, really interesting uh, play, could have easily been a front-runner in that space. And even on the other indication, MDS, uh, myelodysplastic syndrome, and that's a cancer-like disease of the bone marrow, the results were also encouraging there initially. Uh, patients treated with the drug at one point actually became um, blood transfusion free. They didn't have to continuously go for blood transfusions. But over time, you actually started to see these patients relapse. So that meant basically the treatment didn't have that durable effect that they were hoping there. So on both fronts, very disappointing. Um, of course, we know in the for MDS, they are going to proceed with phase three. Um, lot of hope lost, though, I think, for myelofibrosis. So, a lot of big question marks there. Um, but there were a lot of, I guess, red flags along the way, too, Todd. Yeah, creaky doors, dark hallways, voices telling you maybe you should leave the building. Why are you going into this dark room? Why are you going? Um, you know, and I, I think that you know, if we can take away any lessons that we can apply to our future investments in biotech, it would be that you know, always be a little bit cautious when you've got you know, for lack of a better word, better term, a one-trick pony, one drug in development. Um, obviously. 90% of clinical trials fail. The odds are set against you. Um, I would also say that another one of the warning signs to learn from was the fact that J&J had to discard early on a low-dose version of a metal stat or one of their cohorts, low-dose cohorts, um, because of a lack of efficacy. Maybe that was hinting that there could be some problems um, beyond that. So, you know, and then the last, I guess, warning sign might have been the fact that J&J really didn't 
risk a lot to license this drug. They only paid $35 million up front. It was all back-end loaded with milestones after they would have agreed to... Um, to take this thing into phase three. So, you know, maybe avoid small upfront back end loaded deals. Yeah, very important lessons there. And even too, there was, I guess, some writing on the wall when you saw the company um, raise about $84 million in the second quarter of this year. And a lot of investors were already beginning to suspect that J&J wasn't going to move forward because they, the company Duran was actually set to receive, I believe it was $65 million in uh, a milestone payment. And of course, all of that was dependent on whether or not they would proceed. And so I think the writing was on the wall when you saw the company do that financing round earlier this year as well. Um, but I think, you know, the take home message is certainly uh, troubling, frightening for drawn investors, but even more so for the patients. Because Todd, as you know, Jacoffee is really, I mean, it's it's really the, the lone winner out there, but it does not work for everyone and it doesn't work all that well for very long. 75% discontinuation rate to a Jacophy within um, five years, Shannon. You know, obviously a major and important need for new drug therapies. And, um, you know, Jaron, obviously the derailing there of its drug is, is bad news and, and disappointing for patients who are eager to find, you know, new options. Exactly. So I think uh, the company ended with about 183 million in cash on its books. It's obviously going to need to either a find a new partner, get some money, or you know continue to try to raise funds. I think it's going to be really hard uh, based on where they're at and what the data is showing currently. But certainly something to keep your eye on if Duran can continue for maybe another next 30 years. I don't think so, but certainly something to watch.